Hello and welcome to Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, here on Friday, the 6th of May, 2022. Uh, a good question to ask is, what is Word Search? You'll be delighted to know that uh, I will be answering that question as we go on through today's session. I also want to introduce a theme over the month of May. Uh, where we're exploring what it is to be in form. That's the number four and the letter M, what it is to be in form, and specifically looking at that through the prism of what takes place in Acts chapter three and Acts chapter four, where we explore the mission, the message, the ministers, and the members. Now for today, in part one, we'll just be covering an overview and reading the scriptures, and then hopefully going forward, we'll be able to explore those in detail uh, about those aspects in those chapters. Um, once that's done in today's session, and then we'll wrap things up with our usual prayer points for word search. As I mentioned, I would let you know what word search is all about. So word search is a place, funnily enough, to search God's word, but it's also a time to allow God's word to search us, where we're encouraging godly development uh, in our character uh, to be more like Jesus, and we're stimulating seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness and what that looks like. And as God's word searches us, and as we search God's word, we're hoping that that should inform and transform our prayer lives and our practical lives for his honor and for his glory. So that's what word search tends to be all about. So the inform series, inform, what is it to be informed? It's my conviction that every follower, every believer, every disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is four things. First of all, they are a member of the body of Christ and they're a member of the family of God. So they're a member first and foremost. Once we've recognized that we're members, the next thing it's important to recognize is that we're also ministers of the Lord Jesus. So we're a member and we're a minister. As well as that, we are also messengers. We have a message to share. That message is the good news of the king. So that's the message that we have to share. So we're a members, we're ministers, and we're messengers. And finally, it's my conviction that we're also missionaries. That is to say that we are ambassadors, emissaries who are here on earth, just passing through to establish and represent, declare, demonstrate, uh, the kingdom of God. So it's good to know what you've let yourself in for when you've come to repent and believe and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit of God so that even as the athletes and the soldiers have to train to stay fit, so it's important that every believer, every disciple can stay in form by remembering the four M's or what it is to be in form. Uh, so that's the desire uh, that I have to share in this particular series to explore that in some detail, as I said, through the prism of this particular chapter. So we've got this chapter, Acts chapter three and chapter four. And before I read it, I want us to get some degree of a context of what's going on. So we're in the book of Acts. Uh, for those of us who are looking through our Bibles, we're in the New Testament. And if we've got the New Testament, then we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. And so in the book of Acts, um, it does what it says on the tin. It really is about the acts of God, the acts of Jesus, the acts of the Holy Spirit, and the acts of people who are filled by the Holy Spirit that leads them to Jesus for the glory of God. And we're fascinated to see what that looks like in the early stages of uh, the church as it develops and it grows. And in these early stages, before we reach these particular um, episodes that we're about to explore, what's taken place is that the risen King Jesus has come on the scene and he's taught his followers about the kingdom. And then just before he ascends, the disciples are keen to find out uh, what time all of this will take place. When is it going to happen? And Jesus says, well, I'm not going to tell you that. But what I am going to tell you is that it's important for you to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. And so they are told to wait in Jerusalem for the promised power of God to be witnesses. And there will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And then once they get that instruction, Jesus ascends to heaven, the disciples follow the instructions, they wait in Jerusalem, they sort out one or two administrative issues concerning the 12 who are supposed to carry out the work, 
And then the promise appears when the Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost. And at that time, the promise is revealed. And Peter, the apostle, uh, uses that time to proclaim the good news to that audience at that time, mostly Jews, Jews from a vast area of the region so that they were speaking different languages. Um, and he's able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And the initial response to that presentation of the gospel uh, is that thousands come to join uh, the church of the living God. So it's great news. Uh, and that's the run up to what we've got here in Acts chapter three and Acts chapter four. So for the time being, as I said, what I will do is I'll just read Acts chapter three and Acts chapter four. And um, then I'll break it down so that you can see the parts of how I'm going to explore that. And then we'll call it, call it a session for the time being. So Acts chapter three says as follows. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and the man, lame from birth, was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people who saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for arms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we've made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Uh, Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaimed these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God 
having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, uh, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh, we cannot deny it. Ah, but in order that it may spread no further among the people, let's warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we've seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. 
And now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus, Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And so, may God give us a blessing as we've read and as we've heard his word being expressed in Acts chapter 3 and 4. Uh, this will form the basis and the platform on which I want us to explore carefully this interesting concept of how every disciple is a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary. I want us to see just how great God is through this episode and what greatness he wants to do through us as we submit to what he calls us to do. Before uh, wrapping up this session, then I just want to give a brief overview of what's covered in these uh, chapters in this particular episode of scripture. I put it to you uh, that there are seven key aspects of this episode. So in part one, we've got the encounter of Peter and John and the man who was lame in the temple. So that's from verses one to 11 of Acts chapter three. Part two is seen in when Peter preaches over verses 12 to 26 of chapter three. And what we notice in there is that I'd like to put it to you that there are two parts to that preaching. And the first part is where Peter informs them about how they killed Jesus and Jesus is still alive. And then the second part uh, really refers to the good news element of things that although it's happened, that repentance is available and they should turn from their wickedness to receive what was promised to them. So that's the Peter preaching element. And then the third part of it is a small part at the beginning of chapter four. It's like the outcome of what's taken place where certain people are arrested for sure, but there are also holy convictions. And that part can't be overlooked or ignored in our consideration of what takes place when we recognize the mission, the message, the ministers and the members. Part four, then I put it to you, uh, is the element where the rulers uh, confront Peter and John, and then Peter and John have an answer for themselves. And then part five is their response to the answer that they receive, where they offer a ruling, and Peter and John offer their response to the ruling, which is to suggest that God overrules that particular ruling. So that's part five. That's something worth exploring in detail as well. Uh, and then we have penultimately part six, and in part six, in the aftermath of Peter and John's first encounter with the rulers, uh, then we have this particular episode where they go to the friends and the friends pray and then they all carry on. That particular section of the episode is worth really exploring in some interesting detail before finally wrapping up in part seven, where we look at what it looks like for a community of the spirit to be in action. So those are the seven parts that I want us to explore and look at how those are a basis to seeing how every believer, every disciple is a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary. Uh, let me be clear, I'm not basing everything that I believe on that one episode in scripture, but I'm just using it as a launch pad and a platform to explore those matters. And it's important because as I said, once we know who we are, and what we're doing here on earth, uh, then we can get on with it. And like a athlete or a soldier must train to get fit. So we too must remember what it is to be in form, uh, to do and be everything pleasing to God. So that's what we're looking at in word search in this particular series over the month of May. I'm trusting that it will be a blessing to you. Please remember uh, these particular points in your prayer as you pray. Uh, for the ministry here at Word Search and what Word Search is about. Please pray that this informed series will be a success 
Uh, pray for the strength from God to enable all of what is to be delivered to be delivered in his power. Um, we're very clear here that we don't serve based on our own intellect or on our own strength, but we depend on the strength of God. So please pray where that's concerned so that his spirit will lead us. Also pray for kingdom expressions. So as James reminds us, we don't just want to be hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word. And the whole point in recognizing who we are is that if we're pursuing first his kingdom, we want to see expressions of his kingdom taking place all around us. So pray to that end as well in your local area, regionally, nationally, and internationally. Uh, and then remember the kingdom positioning ministries as well. There'll be more information on that in future uh, sessions of word search. But if you can just pray for that, that'll be hugely appreciated. And for us all, if you can pray that we will remain refocused and disciplined on the kingdom of God. Now more than ever, it's really crucial that we are not distracted or put off uh, by the different distractions that are ever available and subtle in trying to take us off track. Uh, pray that we will remain focused and that we'll be disciplined, recognizing as ever that kingdom people apply kingdom practices in kingdom pursuits for kingdom purposes. Uh, thank you then for listening to and watching Word Search on this Friday, the 6th of May, or whenever you've watched it. And uh, God richly bless you as you continue to pursue his kingdom and his righteousness for his name's sake. I've been Christopher Dryden, and if you've enjoyed this particular uh, episode here on whatever platform, uh, feel free to like it and to share and to subscribe and to allow other people to have an opportunity to get in on this uh, and then perhaps be able to use it to help advance their own relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you again. God bless you. Shalom.